All right, guys, thanks for tuning in and watching. Uh, this is Questions with you know, with Kaz. We're trying to uh, take some time and answer uh, some of the questions that we often get asked. Sometimes these are questions that uh, aren't asked, maybe haven't been asked before, but we try to address them to give you as much information uh, as we possibly can. So without further ado, we'll go ahead and get started and try to work our way through some of these questions. Um, So Andrew Jameson uh, sent in a question, says, I have an 0760 power stroke. How long should I let it warm up in warm weather? How long in cold weather? 30 to 40 degrees. It seems sluggish when I take off uh, when cold. So I get that question uh, pretty often, and uh, you see that question a lot of times asked on the pages. And I think that people have a misconception about um, what really is affecting um, or adversely affecting the engine by taking off. So I'd like to kind of talk to you a minute about that. Um, but the true answer to that is based off the, uh, a couple of things. It's not just the poor point of the oil or the poor factor of the oil. Uh, it really stems from, um, uh, it really stems from cylinder to piston, uh, contact. So in aviation, uh, a lot of times in an air cooled engine, I think you'll see, this more of a problem than you will uh, in in a um, uh, water cooled engine, but it really does give a good example. So in aviation, it's not necessarily how long the engine's been running. We have what we call shock cooling. So when we're um, when we're when we're flying, let's say we're at an altitude at 10,000 feet, if we pull the throttle back and we push the nose down, we're going to go ahead and accelerate and cool those cylinders down. Shock cooling really comes to effect when uh, you bring the throttle back in. Um, after you've uh, had a reduced power scenario for a long period of time. What happens is that the cylinders are going to cool down and they're going to contract. The piston, as you're adding more power to the cylinder, uh, is going to expand through heat and so you're going to have more cylinder wear. The same thing can be said of the same question that's being asked. It's not just a matter of the shear level of the oil, while that is something important to note, um, it is also something, that, especially with guys with the larger injectors, things where they're going to be adding more, uh, adding more fuel and more power to that cylinder. Uh, it, you know, as a general rule, um, you don't really want to see more than 50% engine load until you're up to operating temperatures. If you can help it, um, it's not imperative, but it, as far as reducing uh, or reducing the amount of wear. Uh, I would go with about 50% uh, engine load until operating temperatures are achieved because that's really going to affect, um, that's going to affect piston uh, to cylinder wall wear. And uh, that's, that's definitely crucial. So thanks, uh, Andrew, for asking that question. Uh, the next one coming up is uh, Will Chance. He asks, uh, what's your biggest mechanical achievement in your eyes? Uh, we've definitely been known as the 6-4 guys. Uh, we're the guys that uh, we really kind of have our claim to fame with making the 6-4 engines live. We've been uh, really successful with that platform, and there have been a lot of people that, that have not been able to, to do so well with it. Um, but we found that it can be, and truthfully, it's, a, it's probably my favorite, six, uh, excuse me, it's my favorite uh, power stroke platform. Um, the reason being is uh, because of the bottom end of the engine, uh, the bed plate design, but the things that can be done to make it a, a good aftermarket platform certainly weren't there uh, in the OE's eyes uh, when they were designing it. But we've taken a lot of the things that the 6-7 guys were doing, uh, when I say the 6-7 guys, I should reiterate, um, with the 6-7 engineers when they were coming out with that engine, some of the things that they had problems with um, the things that they found and, and solved, we're taking those, changing some of the designs and going back to the 6.4 and applying that. And it really makes for a great platform. Um, so if we can make a 6.4 live, uh, everything else was pretty much uh, downhill from there. It was pretty easy. So that's definitely been one of our um, big achievements there is being known for an inferior platform to start with, but making a superior flat platform uh, ending with that has definitely been something that um, that we're proud of. Choate Engineering Performance can fill every need you have in the diesel industry, providing all the parts you need to make your project reliable, dependable, and worth your buck, with all the parts to keep you moving in whatever application. 
We don't skimp on time or money to give you performance custom built to your needs. Chode Engineering Performance, one stop for all things diesel. Question number four uh, comes from William Hamilton. He says he has a 9412 valve and I've changed the fuel filter and now it's like I have zero power and almost as if the turbo isn't kicking on. Lots of black smoke, way more than before. Any thoughts? Uh, black smoke is definitely uh, indicative of overfueling, underboosting. Um, you typically you start seeing black smoke. Uh, Twenty to one is your air fuel ratio that you start seeing um, a visible black smoke. Um, that being said, if uh, you have zero power, the tur turbo's it's binary. It's either going to work or it's not going to work. It's a derivative of how much heat's in the cylinder, and that's what is actually going to spin the, the turbine wheel on the compressor. So. Um, it sounds like though you're getting fuel, but you're not getting any air. I would be checking for boost leaks, intercooler boost maybe uh, boot maybe have blown off. Uh, we get a lot of phone calls like that. Uh, guys hear a, maybe a loud a loud pop before they have loss of power and uh, lots of black smoke. So I would be checking to see if I had a hole in an intercooler boot, uh, a damaged intercooler, um, a blown gasket uh, on the intake. Uh, but more than likely, I would I would be suspect of a uh, blown intercooler boot. So check that out and see if that uh, isn't your problem. Thanks. Good question, William. All right. So question five is from Gary. Uh, Gary asks, can the workhorse engine handle snow performance, water methanol injection, uh, two-stage system? Uh, Gary, the workhorse engine, for those that don't know, is a standard package that we put together for guys that are going to be towing, guys that are going to be towing often, uh, guys that are using these trucks day in, day out for, you know, it can be anything from construction workers that are hauling heavy loads to um, hot shotters to guys hauling horses, whatever it might be. But guys that are just really putting their trucks through. Uh, a lot more abuse than what your average daily driver guy would have really, you know, taking the boat on the weekends or whatever that might be. So we put together a package uh, and that package includes a lot of things. O-ring heads is one thing that's uh, pretty much standard on most of those models. Um, you know, different camshaft designs. Um, there's several things that make the workhorse <clears throat> a better engine um, per se. But uh, to answer your question, can it handle it? Yes. Uh, to answer your, your question of that wasn't asked, would you do it? I would say no. So proper tuning, proper injection, injector sizing, and turbocharger sizing would definitely be my uh, go-to before I had ever looked at you know, doing anything with uh, water methanol injection. Hope that helps. Thanks, Gary. All right, guys. So thanks so much for your questions. Uh, we greatly appreciate it. We love to take time to uh, try to help as much as we can in the industry, um, but be sure if you will to like and uh, subscribe to our channel on YouTube. Uh, you can find us on Facebook, Chode Engineering Performance, as well as Instagram. The links below. Uh, keep the questions coming. Thanks a bunch, and uh, see you next time.